Hey gadget groupies, the smartphone market is very mature, but Microsoft thinks they can disrupt it by blurring the lines between phone and PC just like the Surface walks between laptop and tablet. Their newest weapon, the HD 500 dock for the Lumia 950 and 950 XL. This heavy little hub is the backbone for Continuum, which provides users a PC-like setup when they connect their phones to larger displays. A new Lumia with a USB Type-C connector plugs into the front face, and that's all you need to activate Continuum and charge your phone. The rear of the hub features a trio of USB 3 ports, an HDMI connector, display port, and another USB-C port to power the hub. It's compact, easy to travel with, and it feels solid like it can take some abuse. The metal sides are flanked by a satin finished top, and the entire bottom is made out of a no-slip, grippy material. This is welcome design as connecting various cables and peripherals like mice to a lighter, more slippery dock would be extremely annoying to have it slide around on your desk. There can be some cable management issues in having so much connected to such a small hub, and if you keep a cluttered desk like I do, that can be difficult to work around, but the setup makes a lot of sense for what it's trying to accomplish. In fact, one could use this without any input peripherals, as the screen on your phone can function like a touchpad, and the software keyboard will pop up when you place the cursor on text entry fields. While I'd like a version of this dock which acted more like a phone cradle or stand, you'd lose out on that input functionality when ditching the cable. Just for the record, Microsoft sent over a new Bluetooth universal folding keyboard and a fancy little arc mouse to review this dock. At the time this video was shot, USB support was a bit limited. Input peripherals work great, USB storage shows up just fine, but audio input devices weren't recognized by the phone. No USB mics or cameras for you podcasters just yet. Upon connecting your phone, your monitor, TV, or projector will flash through a nifty little demo video, then the screen will swap over to a Windows 10 style interface with Windows key, back, Cortana, and multitasking toggle in the bottom left-hand corner. The top of the phone screen will display phone info like wireless signal strength, the time, and battery capacity while your phone is charging. Performance here works well for the most part in covering the basics, and you do sort of feel like you're using a low-power PC. Hitting the start button, you'll see your phone's home screen and shortcuts. This really does drive home the metaphor that Windows 10 on mobile is built to replicate the start button layout found on PCs. Apps which aren't compatible are grayed out, but a decent number of services on your phone are ready for the big screen. Office apps resemble their smaller screened counterparts, and this entire review was written in Word from the Bluetooth keyboard through Continuum. Maps, weather, music, videos, file management, calculators, calendars, your text messages, and Facebook can all be utilized while broadcasting. Even the camera on your phone can be activated, though that will often look a bit silly as your phone is lying on your desk. And USB Type-C is fast enough on this hardware to play through 50 megabit per second UHD videos shot from the Lumia camera. We've also heard Netflix will be making their app universal next year, so I would expect more services like that to follow, as even desktop users are starting to use apps more than streaming through web browsers. Speaking of browsers, the Edge browser is powerful, but somewhat slow. It does a great job of offering up a desktop-grade browsing experience, but many services like YouTube tend to not play well with mobile-powered hardware for that full-site view. Even over a fast Wi-Fi connection, it can take a long time for YouTube to load, and individual button presses will often take long enough that you'll question whether it registered your command. Cortana is on hand for all of your searching needs, and typed queries are handled well. I found a bit more inconsistency in voice searches, mainly for the fact that my setup required I place the dock farther away than I would normally interact with voice search, but of course, your mileage will vary. As this is running natively on a Windows device, you will have full access to all of the rich person and location reminders Cortana is known for. The few changes made to this UI are a bit disorienting, though. You won't find traditional close or minimize window buttons in the upper right corner of your programs. Apps are closed via the the multitasking view. You also can't split screen apps like you can on Windows tablets. The phone just doesn't seem to be able to drive multiple apps at the same time. This is fine for apps that take advantage of more real estate, but looks a bit silly when a calculator takes up a lot of unneeded space. Activating and minimizing apps happens from the bottom dock. Click on a tile, it opens, click on that dial again, and it minimizes. Happily, you can continue to use your phone like a phone while it's connected to the Continuum dock. Both phone and PC style experiences exist separate from each other. Maybe the only complaint I have with operation is what happens when the monitor input is unexpectedly disconnected. In setting up screen capture hardware, I accidentally lost the first paragraph of this review when the phone detected the monitor had been disabled. It's a mistake you only need to make once before you realize how you should handle this hardware, but it would still be nice if there were some kind of desktop save state for those situations. One additional concern might be heat. 
You shouldn't have to worry about your phone battery dying while using this dock, but your screen will stay on, and hitting the power button will also end your continuum session. So where does that leave us with the HD 500 display dock? This is a very promising start. A lot of marketing will push the message that Lumias are phones that can replace your PC, and that's just not true. What we have here, though, is a great first venture in expanding the role our phones can play, and it's beautifully built hardware for that $99 price tag. When paired with the right workflow, this could be a terrific solution for folks concerned about working and traveling. It also sets the stage for developing countries where people might not be able to afford multiple computing devices. I do have to offer up one more note of criticism, though, in that I look at products like this the same way I look at devices like the iPad Pro. Make no mistake, the future of consumer software will resemble more app development than traditional desktop-style programs. But products like this are somewhat sold on the promise of what's to come, the apps and services which will eventually arrive for a platform. And there's no guarantee that the services you need will arrive for your chosen gadget investment. Still... It's pretty exciting to see where this kind of computing might lead. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more reviews like these, and I would not be able to continue producing on this channel if you all weren't out there supporting it, either by hitting the fan funding, shopping using the various affiliate links below each video, or by buying my photography book. Take better photos. Smartphone photography for noobs is now on Amazon Kindle and is the perfect way to take your phone photo skills up a notch. Of course, sharing my reviews is always greatly appreciated on your favorite social sites like Twitter, Reddit, Facebook, and the Google Plus, so please keep bringing more cool people to the party. Hit that thumbs up button, and I will catch you all on the next review.